Alright, hello everybody and welcome back again. I'm Forex and I'll be doing another mission on camera in this Let's Make video. And this time I have prepared again something a little bit different than before. And as always with this small series of mine, every single video is a bit different. So I have decided to make another mission and this time it's a training session and nothing else than a shooting range where you can uh, try out the new weapons and all, all of that stuff. And I have decided to give the whole mission, the whole idea, a little bit different content. So once you see the mission, you will definitely realize that it's not just the normal standard van vanilla target shooting that you can see maybe in campaign in bootcamp. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. Um, we'll be doing something a little bit different. It will be a little bit more scripted so that you can see all the commands that we have been uh, talking about in all of in all of the tutorials that you can find on the channel. And I have also decided that because this mission is so nice to do and um, so special in a way, um, I'll be actually dividing it into two separate videos. In the first one, that is this one, I'll be doing the base template for the mission where it's basically just about the player coming in and shooting custom targets and then leaving. That's all there will be to it. Not, not really much, but you will see the basic functions of a player shooting custom targets, which will be uh, live units and b uh, AI shooting uh, the target objects, the, uh, the static objects. So basically two quite, uh, quite useful functions that you will uh, learn here. Also, we'll all give it a little bit of a face of a shooting range so that it doesn't look completely empty. And then in the second video that will be a little bit advanced. I'll add a lot more effects to the whole thing. I will um, learn the AI to shoot a little bit more, um, more realistically, I, I could say. Um, but on the other hand, it will be a bit more script heavy and, and there will be quite a lot of things that I haven't uh, talked about in the ch on, on the channel and maybe some things that you might have never seen before. So definitely it's not for absolutely uh, new people to the, to the Arma editor. But on the other hand, if you have more experience, you um, might want to click to the other video. I'll be doing the same mission just with more stuff in it. And um, let's see first what the mission looks like, because of course you can see that I have already the entire mission prepared and I will just um, later I will just go through the individual steps to how to make this mission, because in order to prepare this thing, I had to actually make it um, and spend some time. I don't know if it was about four or five hours just with this basic uh, setup and then several more hours with the advanced uh, stuff. So in order to prepare for this video, I really have to uh, actually test all that stuff and make sure that it works. And even if this is uh, the basic one, there's still a lot of stuff put into it. Uh, and I, you know, in the last video, there have been some opinions that I should edit a little bit more, that I should add more stuff to the missions. So I have decided, yeah, why not? Um, but I have to test all of that stuff first. So I have already made that mission and I don't have like two computers or two monitors to be able to recreate it in front of your eyes. I have already made it, but we'll go through these steps because basically it's very recent and I still have in memory all of those steps that I went through. So yeah, for sure, uh, we can preview the mission right now. And uh, then I'll talk about the individual um, features of this mission. So right now we are in a, a shooting range already. Um, there are two AI shooting on uh, targets and there's our team leader. We'll go to him and speak to him. There is no audio. 
Um, finally you are here. Come with me, we got something special for you. Go grab the new goggles, you find them in a big metal box over there. Alright, so he's sending us to the shooting range to try out the new goggles that they have repaired. The targets now have shapes of actual human body. Well, they are holograms as well. So basically what is going on here, I didn't want uh, the, tar the targets to be these simple uh, like metal things. That's, that's really not cool, that's uh, what the AI can do. As you can see right now they are just shooting um, on, the, on the dead targets. And they are also doing that um, indefinitely. I have set it up and I will show you how to do that as well. They are basically... Um, aiming at the target constantly and then a function is firing for them because the AI is unable to fire at static objects. Alright, so we'll go to this big metal box and because I have, um, I didn't want the static targets for the player, I have decided that I will spawn actual units and because I don't want to spawn op for soldiers in the middle of a target practicing mission, I have decided to spawn holograms of, uh, of enemies and for holograms you might need some equipment to be able to see them and we'll use the virtual reality goggles. So we'll drag them into our inventory, prepare and what I intended uh, with this was basically you, you wear these goggles and they enable you to see uh, the holograms and all of that virtual stuff on the on the uh, training field. So with that you can practice shooting without actually having any uh, physical targets, only virtual ones. So we'll see how that works. Uh, I will put on the, v the VR goggles like this. And there we go, we already have a target. So we can kill him. It's a virtual entity. Uh, of op4 and good enough practice some more or come see me to continue so we can either go back now to uh, to our commander to our team leader or we can keep shooting these these guys uh, they keep appearing as soon as you kill one another one appears and you can either practice some more or go back of course we can also test that uh, these holograms are only possible uh, they are only present if you have the VR goggles on you. So now we take them and the hologram has disappeared. We cannot see him without uh, the goggles. So let's get them on and he's back. And we can shoot him, take the goggles away. And again, there is nothing to see. Okay, so this is basically the main function that I wanted to show you. Uh, to make things a little bit more interesting, we can of course have the player uh, to shoot his targets that are a little bit more interesting than uh, these uh, plastic men and at the same time we can also make some fine conditions with the goggles and stuff. So I'll take that off, we can end the mission, the ending is a uh, the, more, the, the most standard like yeah, good job, mission completed, and that's it. The, this is the most basic stuff that I could uh, think of when doing this mission. So we will uh, now go through the individual steps, then we'll go through the scripts. And then you can move on to the advanced video that should be on at the same time as this one. And and there I um, expand upon this idea. Uh, I uh, set different patterns for the AI to shoot. N right now they shoot uh, one bullet every like two and a half seconds or so. And uh, I improve that and I also improve the player's shooting. I, I make a little bit more in there, but again, it takes more time and it uh, is a bit more complicated. So anyway, I have uh, the player's unit and some static objects and a few AI units um, on the map. So we'll go through uh, all of them. So first of all I have uh, the player's unit and you can see the set behavior command careless uh, so that the player starts with his weapon lord. Uh, it's the best that I can do 
to prevent the player from starting with his weapon aiming directly at his team leader um, and he also starts in a bit of a cinematic so it's better to have him on careless mode uh, he has two waypoints they weren't uh, they weren't visible in the in the session that I have just shown you because um, as you can as you can uh, already know and tell uh, if you just click on preview it doesn't show you the waypoints you have to uh, either save and um, test it as a single player mission or you have to hold shift and click on preview so he has two normal waypoints with no uh, special functions and he also has this one trigger that we'll get to uh, a bit later I also have the officer um, he is named officer, he's actually a team leader and the name officer is because I check if the player is close enough to him to start the dialogue and start the finishing sequence, the end game. So he has to have a name, his name is officer, he's also in the careless mode and he is up. So he'll always be standing, set unit pause, set unit pause up, he is um, the position of the unit will be always standing he will never go to the ground um, and then I have used the uh, Bohemia interactive function one of many this one is ambient anim it is basically a function that lets you uh, use um, random more or less random animations on soldiers uh, to have them do normal stuff to appear more more normal and more common so for example, if you are making a base or a or populating a big city with soldiers or a, or any big place for that matter, you may want all all the soldiers to appear as human beings and not just statues that uh, that stand in place and do absolutely nothing. So this is exactly what the ambient anim is for. You basically choose one of uh, several several presets. For the animations for example i have this watching animations enabled and um the game automatically chooses a few animations that repeat and uh, make the soldiers look like they are actually living beings so this is what the officer does and as you can see we have a few triggers around him actually all of these triggers have different conditions so it doesn't really matter where they are um, so we'll open the first one so we can see the player distance officer this is the distance command it, re it returns the distance between two objects or two locations and now we are interested in the distance between the player and the officer and it needs to be less than four meters so that is quite close so we need to come back or sorry not come back but come forth towards the officer or the team leader and we need to be closer than four meters and also there are two variables that need to be false this is a exclamation sign it might not be um, visible uh, in the video but this is an exclamation sign complete and exclamation sign returned um, I'll get to these uh, in a second I'll also show them I have them in a in a script basically what this does is we are checking if the player has completed the course or not and if he has already talked to the officer at all so right now the complete is not true and the return is also not true so he has not seen this officer he has not returned to him and he has not completed the course either so this is the place for the first um for the first uh, like introduction so it is finally you are here come with me actually he doesn't move so it will be like listen instead listen we got something special for you just a normal title text uh, command and then we are uh, launching a script it's a cutscene and I will show you how what what it does in uh, later when I, when we are going through scripts basically it only uh, shows the next texts with uh, with little pauses so this is the introduction and then we have two more 
Um, yeah, this is the returned one. So again, player distance officer needs to be less than four meters and the returned has to be true. So before it was false and we knew that it was the first time that he has seen uh, the, the officer. But right now <clears throat> the returned value is true and that means that it's a completely different situation. And we already know that he has seen the officer before, he has introduced himself to him and now he's returning to the officer for more information. So right now the text has changed and it is how about you try shooting some more, we need to test it properly. I'll show you uh, how that works um, in the next testing session and it's another title text command. The complete is still set to false, the condition is still waiting when the return is false, when the return is true and the complete is false. The third trigger that we have here is player distance officer is less than four, that's for all of them the same, and the complete is true. And that is launched when uh, the player has actually completed the course by putting on the goggles, shooting uh, an enemy unit and then um, the officer calls him back to him. So that is what ends the mission and shows the good job message. We have already seen this one in action and you can, you can see that the first time we came to the officer he showed us uh, the introduction and the second time we came to him we uh, got the end mission. And that is exactly what the complete and returned uh, variables do. They basically check uh, what situation it is in the mission and what needs to be done. So alright, that's for the officer and the interaction with him. Um, I will show you how the return uh, works. We basically have a trigger over here that sets the return value to true and it is activated once the player enters the area around the box. So basically you first come to the officer, he introduces you to the shooting range and uh, tells you to go to that box. You go to that box and once you are here you can return to him and he will tell you hey you should more you should shoot uh, at least something you should shoot more and then we'll talk so you return to the box put on the goggles shoot something and then you tr you return and it's a end of the mission so this is basically how that works over here we have just some static objects this is the logic unit game logic um, it controls the shooting of the AI soldiers, it actually is the trigger that they need to shoot and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, we have two soldiers that are the AI, the ambient AI. They All they, all they do is shoot at one target each. Um, so this one, uh, do target target, uh, this is uh, the simple target. So he is always targeting uh, the first target in line and he is shooting at, at the target and because he is shooting constantly and we don't know how long the player will play the mission I have added, I have added an ev event handler to, the, to, to his init box you can see that add event handler fired uh, and uh, this is the name of the soldier set vehicle ammo one that means that uh, every time he shoots the magazine that he is actually using will refill itself so that he never loses the ammo necessary to shoot and he will keep shooting constantly set unit pause middle again unit position middle means crouching so he will always be crouching and he will always be targeting and shooting in intervals and every time he shoots the magazine gets refilled, the ammo gets refilled so he can shoot indefinitely. Same thing with with this soldier, he is basically a very similar init box uh, for himself, he is targeting the target underscore 4, he also has the same event handler by the way, um, the video about the event handlers should be up. 
I don't really know if it will actually be up by the time that this video is released because I'm recording several things at once right now and I don't know which one I will um, actually finish first. So either it's already there or it will be in a matter of a few days or maybe a week and a half, but not much more. So uh, you should either already know what the event handlers do and how they behave or um, we will talk about them in a very near future. Set unit post down is uh, for staying on the ground so he will always be laying down on the ground while shooting and he is targeting uh, the target underscore 4 which is this one. It's a bit further away but it's still just a simple target, nothing more just a static object. You can see that they do not have any do fire or fire uh, commands uh, at them because that is uh, taken care of in a script. And that is uh, that script is uh, over here. I have used uh, parameters to show you how that can work. So we are uh, launching the same script twice, once for soldier and once for soldier underscore one. That's the two guys over here and once uh, the target is uh, actually named target and the second time the target is named a target underscore four. So that is the two scripts. They also run their thing. They uh, make the soldiers shoot at their targets. And what do we have next? Apart from that, we have uh, another game logic, location E. Um, because the location word is actually um, a data type, I had to use something a little bit different, but still similar. Uh, so location E is the name where the, uh, where the enemy soldiers will spawn or the VR entities will spawn. So they will always be on this place. And we have a bit, a bit more over here. Um, another game logic for glasses that is not used, I think, so I can uh, remove it. And we have a metal case, large, from the object containers section. Uh, we have a named it table, but uh, that is also not any more used, so uh, I'll do that. And we have added an item to the to the metal case, and that is the VR goggles. It's an ordinary uh, just object. I haven't added any special properties to it, and that's because we can um, we can track uh, the general object type in the in the script, not just the named objects. So this is just a pair of goggles, nothing else. That's what in that box. And what do we have here? Um, oh yeah, I haven't showed that either. That's the trace bullets, and that means. Uh, that I can uh, remove that because we'll use that in the advanced section of the of the mission, which I'll not show you here. So I can preview the mission once again. I'll show you how the officer thing works, and then we'll go to scripts, and then I'll um, I'll explain the rest. So right now the introduction we haven't seen him before. Again, he introduces himself and it tells us to go to that box. So we'll go to the box. You can clearly hear that the AI is shooting again. They are shooting at their targets. Okay, so now we are at the box. We can go back to the commander and he'll tell us to go and shoot something more because he's not satisfied with our results. How about we try shooting some more? We need to test it properly. So that text works as well, so we can now go back, try it again, take the goggles, put them on, the VR entity has spawned in the place of the location E and is now handled by a script. Now they spawn another one, good enough, practice some more or come see me to continue. We'll go see him and he'll offer us the mission ending. Good job, mission completed. Okay, so this is how the uh, mission works. And as you can see, we haven't done that much in the editor itself. We have just um, set up paths to launch some scripts and we'll see those scripts in a second. So yeah, this is really not difficult. We have just used event handlers, that's new. 
I can I can understand that. Um, and other than that, we have just used a few uh, logic units, a couple of triggers, and a few static objects, but not much more. Um, so yeah, the main functionality of the entire mission is in the scripts, and I think that um, we can go and see them right now, and then we'll uh, return back to a quick recap, and that will be it for the basic version of this mission. Alright, welcome back to the script section of the mission. Over here we'll be talking about the actual scripts used. Um, I have um, how many? One, two, three, four scripts, init.sqf and description.txt. All of them used for different reasons. And we'll go through all of them. And I mean, I have already written all of them down because I needed to test everything if it works properly or not. If you want me to um, write them again in front of you, I could do that, but I really don't see the reason why I should um, waste your time by typing out all of the commands that I have already tested out. Um, I don't know, tell me in the comments, I don't want to waste your time by typing. And I think that having the entire mission already prepared and um, being sure that everything works is much more important than actually seeing um, how I typed the individual commands. But I don't know, if you want me to type everything and do the mission like if I was doing it um, on the fly, tell me in the comments. So anyway, um, the cutscene SQF script is uh, the one that gets launched right as you approach the officer, if you remember. Um, the, when we were talking about the three triggers around him, this is the first one. So as he introduces himself, he says one line and that is like, finally you arrived or something. And then the script gets launched. And this is what the, what is inside the script. So there's, first of all, there's a sleep command that uh, waits four seconds. So this is the time when you have um, a few seconds to see the first message that he says that like, finally you arrived. At the same time, the script already is running, so we need to wait at the start of the script. So we wait four seconds, then another message is displayed. Go grab the new goggles, blah, 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 and sleep six more seconds. And then the third message rolls in. This is a super simple script. There is nothing really difficult about it. It's just two commands and two pauses in between them. So I think that we can move on. To the next script this is really just uh, so that I don't have to use three triggers in a row to display text I just used a very simple um, a very simple script next we'll go and have a look at the init.sqf because I think that this is uh, maybe if not the most uh, if not the most important to explain early then uh, it will surely be one of the most important scripts to explain very early on before we get to the next uh, script. Uh, because here we uh, basically define other scripts and define variables and all of that stuff. So it's really good to have uh, a good idea of what is going on first. So at the very start of the mission, before anything is shown on the screen, uh, this is why we are using specifically init.sqf so that it is launched exactly with the first millisecond of the mission before even anything is uh, processed to be displayed. We are already calling uh, commands to, to show the cinema borders. This is the first one. I'm using the uh, Bohemian Interactive function that is in the game already. And I'm using the function instead of the show cinema border command because I think that it's a little bit more elegant and it's definitely just as uh, comfortable to use as the command itself. So I'm using the cinema border function. Um, the first number is um, this zero. It's either zero for rolling in or one for rolling out with the cinema border. Um, then we have the time that is needed for the cinema border to appear. Uh, so we have one 0 0.1 seconds. Next we have a sound, 
uh, that is accompanied with the cinema border effect. Uh, so I have chosen false. I don't want any extra sound there at the very start of the mission and next we have true and that is for locking the player in the first person. So I don't want the player to switch out to third person that would look really um, not quite cool. So I have locked in in the first person and once the cinema borders go away he can do whatever he wants. At the same time we are already launching the cut text effect that is for the black in. So this is the slow fade for the from the black screen to the game screen. Um, it is done in two seconds. And as we are launching it from the Inida desk we, have, we are making sure that it will actually um, be launched at the very start of the mission and will go straight from the black to the game with no other problems. So next we are sleeping a little bit because we need uh, to let the game launch actually and uh, initialize everything properly so sleep 0.3 seconds should be enough and then we are using the play action which is another command that i haven't really mentioned yet in any of the tutorials and that is a command that plays a specific action these are all um these are all defined in the in the game files i'll of course leave a link in the description to that list it's a number of basically simple actions that players or ai can use and i want him to use it now and don't wait for anything else because we are at the start of the mission he doesn't really have to do anything else so play action now player walk forward so at the start of the mission right after the um, the fade effect and the cinema border effect um, we want the player to walk forward and uh, because we are still in the cinematic effect um, the player doesn't actually have a direct control over his unit so it doesn't matter that uh, the player uh, the player's unit is walking for him uh, we actually want that next we wait um, until the mission time is more than one so until uh, one second has passed and then the second part of the condition is speed of the player has to be equal to zero in other words when he stops so at the start we uh, force him to walk forward then we wait uh, approximately 0 0.7 seconds and at the same time the player has to stop so basically we are waiting for him to stop so um, this is true when the action is actually finished that is approximately three seconds in the mission so we're waiting for that moment and at that exact moment when the player stops and the mission time is more than one um, the cinema border can go out so we are uh, the first parameter is one for fading out in 1.5 seconds we don't want any sound and we don't need the player to lock him in the first person mode. We call the cinema border again to move them away from the screen and then we can uh, move on. We define two variables that I have already talked about. They are all related to the, um, to the team leader and the stages that he is in. So complete and returned are both false in the init.sqf and that is for two reasons. Um, a, we want uh, to make sure that they are not true at any given time at the start because we don't want that. We want all of them to be false and we actually turn them on during the mission. So at the start it is better to have them uh, named as false. And the second reason is um, we also have, made just, have just made sure that they are already defined, that they are already in the game. And if we uh, want to use them in any situation during the mission, we already have them here set as false and the game knows that, oh yeah, these exist. They are already defined. So this this is why I have uh, included them in the Inedar SQF. Of course, they are global variables and some of, some of you might be uh, more used to other techniques. This is the easiest uh, so yeah, this is what we are going, going to use. Um, 
Next, we are actually just launching uh, the scripts themselves. So first we are launching the shooting script for soldier. Next, we are uh, executing the same script for the second soldier. This is tar target four, soldier one. So this is the second guy. And we are uh, launching the script for glasses. And that is the script that controls if you have the glasses on or not. And uh, it, or it also works with the target location for the enemy, uh, enemy soldiers to spawn. So location E is over here. Okay, so now we can look at the shooting script for the AI. It is very simple actually in this form. Uh, we are just defining who is the soldier, who is the target. We pass them as parameters in the init.sqf. So uh, it's these two, soldier and target or soldier one, target four. Uh, they are existing here as local variable soldier and local target. And we are basically making a very simple loop while the player is alive so for the entire um during of the for the duration of the uh, of the mission um the soldier targets his target then uh there's a there's a short sleep uh in between and then we are finally using the logic the game logic from before that i've shown you and i told you that um it has actually a very important function for the soldier shooting and this is right right here it's the command action and the command action also has uh, many specific uh, uses and this time we're using the action named used weapon and basically it's a very interesting um it's a very interesting action because it actually isn't related to the logic unit itself the logic unit is just launching the action uh, and the action itself makes the soldiers to fire no matter what. If they want or not, it, they will fire. It just pulls the trigger for them. The soldier may not even want to fire at all. He might have uh, the weapon lowered or maybe even on his back and it will still fire. This is what the action does. So basically we're making sure that the soldier actually targets his target so that it looks realistically and then the logic pulls the trigger for him. So this is the use weapon, the name of the action. This is the name of the vehicle that we want to use. So the vehicle is the soldier himself. This is the name of the unit inside of that vehicle that needs to, um, that, that we are referring to. Again, it's just the soldier and uh, the zero at the end that's the index of his weapon which is in this case zero i think it's one for side arms and zero for primary arms but i'm not sure maybe launchers as well i don't really know for primary weapons it's zero and then we uh, wait another another uh, second and a half and we uh, do the uh, loop again so basically we are just looping the action over and over because uh, the both soldiers have that event handler in them um, it makes sure that they never run out run out of ammo so they can keep shooting and firing at their targets and this action does exactly that so that's um, the soldiers the AI if you want the advanced video, they are shooting in more random intervals. Um, make sure to check that as well if you are interested. Next, we are going to have a look at the description.txt. We have a few um, lines over here. These are just classic and a music class with one uh, track. This is the goggle music and it is played when you put on the goggles. It's pretty much straightforward, just um, a music class and a few lines to define what the mission is about, who is the author and what image to show at the very start, at the loading screen in fact. So I have already talked about all of this in other videos, we are not going to um, waste any more time, we are going straight for glasses.sqf and we have um, another loop over here, so while the player is alive we are uh, looping this entire thing over and over. And first of all, we're waiting for the moment when the player's goggles are the same as 
this name. And this is the class name of the goggles that we are using. You can see it's the goggles VR. And this G stands for gear, I think, or I'm not sure. Anyway, it's the class name. And we are waiting for the moment when this class name is the same as the player's goggles, which is when he actually puts them on. And when that happens, the music is played. The target is actually defined because um, if you remember from any data SQF, we are actually passing a parameter location E. So we define that over here after we have uh, waited for the player to to get his goggles. So we can uh, define the, the parameters over here in the middle of the script as well. So it's the local variable target over here and we sp we actually spawn another script inside of this script with uh, with the target um, as well. We basically pass the argument to another script because we'll use it in the spawn.sqf. We'll see the spawn.sqf later. Um, now um, we can move on with this script. Uh, we wait for another for another situation to happen, and that is when the player takes the glasses off. So basically, when his goggles are not these ones. And that is um, whenever he decides to put them off. And um, in that case, well, I should probably uh, show you the other script first. Yeah, that will be much better. Let's move to spawn.sqf. I promise you that this will all make sense once I explain everything. Um, this is perfectly okay and easy scripting. Um, over here we define the local variable target for the third time. And again, it's uh, the local parameter passed to the script. So first of all, we passed the location E as parameter to glasses. Inside glasses, we defined, okay, the parameter, whatever it may be, is now the local variable target. And right after that, we have passed the local variable target, which is uh, the parameter from this one. So the, again, the location E, we have passed it to another script, spawn.sqf. And inside the spawn.sqf, we have defined the local variable target is the parameter. So we are uh, working with a local variable target again, and we are having another loop. It's exactly the same as all other loops that I'm using in these uh, in these examples, and a live player and do all of this stuff. All right, so uh, we are basically dividing the entire spawning unit and having goggles on into two parts. The first part is the unit creation. So right before the unit is created, we are asking the game if the player actually has his goggles on the head. So if the goggle player is not the VR glasses, then we can exit with no code. This actually exits, exits the while do uh, loop. It only exits the current scope. And you might want to read on that in on the wiki page. I'll not really explain much of this, but basically we are just exiting uh, this scope from the line two to 14. We are going off the scope to line 15, the script ends and we are good. So we are asking, does he actually have the goggles on? And if he does not, we are going out. If he does, we can move on. Now we are creating the unit itself. So the local variable unit is and all of this stuff. All right. So um, this is the command create unit. As you can see, it's a very, it's a favorite command for everyone. Uh, who is actually creating like dynamic missions and it's very often used in multiplayer because it dynamically creates units on the run without the need to place them in the editor. This is the dynamic creation of every infantry soldier and basically we are choosing um, which class name we want to make. So in this example we are making the VR, the virtual reality soldier, this is the VR entity. 
and then we uh, create unit and then we have some parameters for the actual soldier himself so first of all we define the position so this is the position of the target which is t parameter which is the parameter of the previous uh, script glasses that sqf and then and there it is the parameter from the previous one in the sqf where it is defined as location e so position location e next we have a group because he wants to be alone in a group we don't have any other op for soldiers on the map we create a new group for him create group east so he's in a newly created group next we have the init box for him and i have defined the name um basically we don't have the, the name box for these dynamically created soldiers so i have to use vr unit which is a variable is this so this newly created unit is now vr unit and we will use the, the name in more scripts uh, later next we have um i think that this is the relative position from the uh, defined position like a random location so we have zero he spawns exactly on the same place um and then we have his rank he's is a private that's really not very important in this case so we have just created a unit and be aware he is not named unit as we have defined over here he's actually named vr unit okay bear that in mind it's a very important detail that you might get wrong in, a, in, a, in some places but really it's best to name them like this vr unit is this okay next we are already using the newly created name we are unit um we already set the behavior of other soldiers so we'll do it we'll do it again with this one careless behavior is the best for simulations and testings and and testing and all of that so careless behavior for him disable his ai and that part of ai that enables him to move so he will never move from the place and he will always be careless about what is going on around him so that's exactly what we want he's just a static object basically he's just a target with a human body and then we um, do nothing just wait until he's no longer alive and this is related to the previous script glasses.sqf where i stopped so let's go back to glasses where we are waiting until the player um, takes away his glasses at that moment if the vr unit exists if it's not null if he exists we delete him all right this is the last part of the glasses.sqf and we are basically asking okay the player has now taken his glasses off does the vr unit exist do you have any idea who that might be and if the game says oh yeah it's that it's that vr entity guy he is not null then we delete him if the game hasn't actually spawned the vr unit yet then we don't have to delete him and we don't have to do anything and basically now we can go back and once he's deleted he's no longer alive so either um if the player has taken off the glasses or once um the player has actually shot him that we can move on though the the condition will be true in either in either case so next we have again another check if the player doesn't have his goggles on we can go out of the script and if he has we can move on sleep two minutes uh, two seconds uh, to allow the body to fall to the ground then delete him then sleep one more second and then we have the all right message complete is now true so the player once he returns back to the officer he will get the ending notification and the loop goes once again so we again ask does the player still have these glasses after the three seconds that have passed he does okay create another unit call it vr unit 
wait until either the player kills him or he takes off his glasses and the unit is killed automatically by the second script and go through the same procedure again. So that is basically uh, what we are doing right now. These are all the scripts. Um, I will. I have no problem showing you once again how it all works and what it actually does. We can go through all of this. But I think that it's pretty simple still and we are not doing anything dramatically difficult. It has uh, taken me some time but not that much and I think that it's still a pretty simple mission that you could have some fun improving and actually making uh, something good out of this. And let me tell you, I really like seeing uh, missions uh, or even campaigns that have proper training missions or just missions that are all about the training. It's a lot of fun when you do it properly and with this um, when I've, with this um, template of, of the shooting range you might actually make a good training base for an entire mission. Do something else with this and then add something yours and you have a fine mission. Okay, let's back let's go back to the editor. I think that we have already gone through all of this and we'll um go through the editor units once again. Welcome back to the editor. We are here and yeah now that we have already seen the, all the scripts I think that it's pretty clear that uh, most of them are automatic, they are taken care of by themselves and they are absolutely, they are not a part of this mission, like we don't have to take care of five triggers that are influenced by the scripts. The scripts are basically um, outside the mission itself, they are not really in it. Uh, the only thing that we have defined there is a logic that's the game logic uh, and we need that in the mission. Other than that, it could even be a parameter, I don't care. And other than that, we haven't really defined many things that would require like a big influence of the mission or like big implementations or anything. It's just a few scripts and they are quite simple. They are... Uh, influencing each other and they are communicating with each other but you know that's a good thing so um this is the radio alpha i'm now no, no i'm now noticing that um it's most probably one of the testing things that we no longer need so delete that the mission should work the same anyway so we'll test it once again i'll show you more what the ai does and I'll explain you how it is done. And uh, now that you have seen all the all the scripts and all the stuff behind this, you might uh, understand more what is going on. So this is the init.sqf working. Now we are defining all the all the scripts. We are launching all of this stuff. Now it is done, and the init.sqf has ended. The script for goggles is waiting until we put on our goggles. And the shooting script is already running. You can already hear that. The trigger is now waiting for us. So we are 4 meters from the officer or the team leader. Now he's displaying the message for us. And he is um, now going through the other messages that are in the, in the cutscene.sqf. The AI is shooting. You can see that there is... There is always the same um, delay between the players, sh between the AI uh, shots. You can hear them that they are shooting one bullet every 3.5 seconds or something. And because we are launching the first script for the first soldier that's over there, and then we are waiting three seconds for the second one. They are actually not shooting at the same time, they are shooting one, three seconds nothing, and then another. So that's what this is creating. 
let's go over there. We have the glasses.sqf script waiting for us. Now that we take the glasses and we put them on, uh, the condition to, for the player to have the glasses on his head will be true and uh, the unit will be spawned. This also spawned already the spawning uh, script. So now we have two scripts running basically for the player. We have the glasses that controls if the player has some glasses or not. You can see that by the disappearing statue over there. And the other script uh, controls if the, if the entity is alive or not and whether we should replace him or not. So basically that's all there, uh, there is. The mission doesn't do anything else. I know that this doesn't seem like a lot, but I think that we have uh, again shown many useful commands, many good commands that can actually be used in many more missions than this. And at the same time, we have again created something a little bit different than before that might be fun for you to improve and build upon. I again, um, for like the sixth time today, <laughs> I tell you about the advanced video where I take the same mission. I briefly mention the basics once again and then I move on and do some more stuff uh, some more effects I have um, some effects for the AI and some effects for the glasses as well so that you can see uh, how exactly to improve the scripts that I provide you all right so let's go the here and finish the mission mission completed I think that this is it for the basic uh, template of course, you can find the, all the links in the video description. There will be also a link to download the mission itself. You can use it anywhere you want. You don't need to credit me or anything. Just use it and have fun with the game. We have uh, mentioned a lot of stuff that we have um, uh, that we have been talking about in the past videos and tutorials, and we have also. Uh, mentioned some stuff that I haven't really talked about yet or I'm planning to talk about in the near future and the mission is fully functioning I think I've done a good job and yeah so this is it for this video I hope to see you in the next one comment like and share and have a great day